This giant pile of logs will eventually be turned into siding for homes. And did you know that every year in America, we make enough siding to reach the moon five times? Well, today I'm at Louisiana Pacific in Two Harbors, Minnesota, and we're gonna show you how it's done. The process for making engineered wood siding actually starts with aspen logs back here. And joining me today is Dick Hansen, who's plant manager for Louisiana Pacific. Dick, why do you like aspen logs as compared to cedar or some other type of wood? Well, Steve, the aspen logs are very well suited to making our engineered wood product. We aren't using old growth timber. This is fast regenerating uh, wood resource and uh, really makes a nice product. Now, why do you have these logs going into this vat of water? Well, what we're doing here, prior to making siding out of the wood, we're conditioning the logs. It's a temperature controlled environment so that we can make the highest quality flakes for the product as possible. This is important not only in the, in the winter time, but the summer. So this siding is actually made up of strands or flakes that are, are put together and making sure that all these flakes are consistent is pretty important. That's why this is a warm vat of water here? Exactly. Consistency of, is of the utmost importance. So Dick, what happens to the logs after they come up out of the pond? The logs are then fed through a debarker, and that's where we take the bark away from the woody part of the log. Now, why do you take the bark off? Wouldn't you just chop it up and mix it all in? Or? Well, the bark doesn't make a very good furnish to make our, our siding product. We want to use 100% aspen. We do, however, have a recyclable use for the bark that we remove. Then they get cut to length? Yes, they do. They get cut to about 33 and a half inches in the slasher deck. Then uh, where do they go from there? They then go into the wafer and that's where we cut the flakes that uh, make up our product. Now those flakes have to be cut pretty precisely in terms of the right size? So... Oh, they are. Both the thickness, the width, and the length are very closely controlled to make a very consistent product. And then what happens next? They go to some kind of, a looks like a big dryer. The flakes then go into a dryer and are dried down to about 5% moisture, remembering that we started with about 50% moisture in the log. Well, Dick, this may look like another dryer, but this is actually a blender. What goes on in here? Steve, this is where the different things are mixed together to make our board. Now, what goes into that? Well, we add not only the wood, the flake material, we also add a wax, a resin, and zinc borate. Now, what's the purpose of the zinc borate? What does that do for you? Well, the zinc borate gives us fungal and rot resistance, and it also helps keep termite infestation away. So this really isn't just like your standard Orient strand board or other products. This is really kind of a high-tech version of it. Exactly. So we don't have to worry about it rotting or falling off our house. No, we don't. This is where the wood flakes come together and start to look like a building product. But this really is more than just a pile of wood chips on a conveyor belt. There's really a lot of science behind it. What happens is that these flakes are actually oriented in a pattern that gives the board strength. Then a resin saturated overlay is put over the top and it goes on in to a press. Well, Dick, this is a pretty good sized press. How hot is this? That press, Steve, is running at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you can put several pieces in there at one time. How many can you stack in there? That's an eight opening press, so we can do eight, eight by 16 foot boards at one time. Now, you're taking a four inch mat of wood flakes and compressing it down to roughly a half an inch. How much pressure does it take to do that? Well, there's thousands of pounds it takes to do that. You have to remember, we're also embossing that wood grain. Yeah, so it stays in there for about how long? That's just a few minutes time. And so there's a plate up there that embosses this wood grain look on it? Exactly. And then what happens? Okay, following the pressing operation, the boards are rough cut to about four foot by 16 foot long. Following that, we take them to other stations for further processing, dependent upon the customer's need. To cut it to whatever width the siding you want. Exactly. When looking at the back side of this siding, it's pretty easy to confuse this for a common construction material called oriented strand board or OSB. Now OSB is often used in the field for roof decking and wall sheathing, but it's really quite different than what's being used in this siding. And joining me is Greg Schultz, who's product manager here for Louisiana Pacific. These look a lot alike. Actually they do, Steve. Uh, the key thing to remember here is that uh, the siding product is engineered as an exterior cladding material where the other product is engineered as a sheathing material. So this has a totally different recipe? Totally different recipe. You have uh, obviously, the op we have optimized the resin loading, 
the wax loading and also the zinc borate. That's the, how this is all stuck together. That's how it all comes together. And the yes. zinc borate helps make it durable so it doesn't rot out. Well, it's uh, resistant to rot and also to fungal decay and uh, wood boring insects. Do you have a test to show how much stronger one is than the other? Yes, we do. See, we've already gone ahead and set up a sample of uh, standard OSB and what this machine is doing is we're testing the strength of the material by pulling the product apart. Uh, the blue line is the material we just tested, which is Orient Strand Board, and it uh, broke at 86 pounds per square inch. Now let's take a look at our siding. Wow, Greg, the siding did great. It almost did twice as good. 170 pounds per square inch. Steve, another test that we do is a uh, extended water test. This is totally saturated with water, totally soaked. That is correct. Doesn't look like it's changed much. Uh, it's a very stable product. So I never have to worry about this rotting out. No, you don't. If you're thinking about buying siding for your home, you may want to do some research so you get the best product. But in general, you want to buy a product that doesn't warp and lays flat on your house, one that doesn't rot out, and one that comes with a materials and labor guarantee.